why are anti-Shia sentiments on the rise in Pakistan? Since the beginning of Muharram 2020, there has been a stark increase in hostility towards the Shiite community. Thousands of people recently flooded the streets of Karachi in a massive anti-Shia demonstration which has sparked fears of sectarian violence in Pakistan. After the massive protests, the hashtag, uh, hashtag Shia genocide began trending on Pakistani social media. Seas of protesters were seen chanting Shias are kafir, meaning disbeliever, and holding banners uh, for Sepak al-Sahaba Pakistan which is a terrorist organization linked to the killings of Shias over the years. Uh, some commentators attribute the increase in prejudice against Shias to the silence of elite moderate Sunnis of Pakistan. Okay, we got, we just got another one Australian dollar super chat from I'm gay. By the way, this guy really wants to announce that he's gay on our show. He keeps coming up, but okay, you're yeah. But thank you so much for the one the, uh, Australian uh, dollar super chat. I'm gay, and yeah, you be you. Uh, but okay, <laughs> here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing about these um, anti-Shia protests. Okay, so this the consequence of this if keep if things keep going in this direction, like this is going to be. A nightmare. I mean, Pakistan is already a nightmare, but this is going to be like a nightmare within a nightmare, inception level nightmare. Okay. Um, because now you have like, okay, so you have like a lot of minority groups in Pakistan living under constant fear of being accused of blasphemy or being anti Islam. And now you're going after the Shias. Shias who are Muslims are now de being declared non-Muslims. They're being takfir by the Sunnis and being mm -hmm. considered kafirs. This is going to and the Shias are a lot higher in number than all these other minorities that they were being declared as anti-Islamic until now. Like this is going to create civil unrest between Sunnis and Shia in Pakistan to a level that all the other crap that we have seen so far from Pakistan is going to look like insignificant. Imagine that. Imagine all like if things move in that like all the shit that we've seen like people uh, the Ahmadi people the secularists the Christians all the you know nonsense that we have seen from Pakistan imagine all of that being insignificant when the Sunnis put the Shias at, in their target right in Pakistan it's already and, happened. they are in the target yeah yeah but but I mean saying like violently and you know going after. Shias as if they're anti-Islam, right? Like if it comes, like, yeah, I mean, it's already happening, yeah. But if it keeps, if it keeps escalating, right? Um, some people are motivated to think, to say to the Shias that you get what you fucking deserve, because again, we do not endorse this, mm -hmm. but. Is there's a temptation here because before this sh Shia Sunni divide was this strong in Pakistan? I mean, it was strong ever since 1979, but it's increasing. But it used to be that the Sunnis and Shias were united in fighting against to, to accuse people and hunt blasphemers. Um, of other sex, right? Like Matia. Like Ahmadi people, yes. Um, and secularists and atheists and even Christians, mm -hmm. right? So now people are saying that, okay, you helped oppress all these other minorities. Now you are on the receiving end and Sunnis are now coming after you, right? So, so this is what you signed up for. This is what you endorse. And now you get the taste of your own medicine, Shia Muslims. How does it feel? The reason why you should not be tempted to feel like that is because this is what we call. Do you know what we call this, Zena? Collective punishment. punishment. <laughs> Collective punishment, right? Just you, you're not responsible for the bullshit of other people in your community just because you are associated with them right just because you're part of that just because some people in your group that you are associated with went and did some really crappy shit that doesn't mean that you now deserve to pay for their 
douchebaggery, right? There are many, many Shias in Pakistan that did not go out and be like, hey, let's go abuse some Ahmadis people for them. Oh, let's go kill a blasphemer today. There are many, many Shias that never thought that or even crossed their mind for them to do that. But now they're going to be a target to, you know, so do not, whenever, when it comes to people getting what they deserve, please do not think about people as a collective. Please do not think think about what people deserve at large populations or, low, or, or you know, uh, please do not generalize. Please do not do gift by association. When it comes to justice, always do one individual at a time. Okay? Be careful not to be vengeful against an entire group of people ever. Okay? What do you think? Um, yeah, so uh, in the description, I provided two sources for this news item. One of them was a article that was about this massive, massive demonstration that happened in um, Karachi, um, the massive anti-Shia demonstration. So you can learn more about that actual um, demonstration. And then I also provided a link to an article written by an anonymous Shia Pakistani author. Um, and the article is really interesting because it goes through three things, how the state has failed with the sectarian divide, how Sunni allies have failed in the sectarian divide, and how Shias themselves have failed. Um, so a lot of the um, divide just comes from, I mean, just the classic um, split of um, how you feel towards the companions of the prophet, like Sahaba versus Ahlbayt. And um, uh, so people, especially during Muharram, will be persecuted for certain prayers that are um, not done by the majoritarians who are Sunnis. And this article talks about how the demonstration that happened was a massive demonstration of Sunni supremacy. And how there is emerging Sunni supremacist, um, it, or is gaining more and more momentum in Pakistan right now. And it's funny you should mention that because um, in this article, the author also talks about how um, uh, this kind of idea of the Ummah and how Shia leaders have been trying to promote the idea of the Ummah more potentially more than the more mainstream Sunnis who um, do not feel like they have to accept their differences in belief, but while the Shia leaders um, are more promoting a superordinate identity, but then the actual majority isn't promoting a superordinate identity. And um, so they're saying, um, once the majoritarian sect has learned to coexist with the minorities, the Ummah can proceed towards being united. Secondly, Shias have played a significant role in the exclusion of Ahmadis in the name of religion. Um, although, oh, wait, really? They have done that more? Um, it doesn't say more. It just says that they played okay. a significant role. Significant role. In the exclusion of Ahmadis. And... Um, uh, although their rhetoric more often than not has been politically charged, they only paved the way for the Sunni supremacists to come for them next. Um, they gave a particular example. And so I've been watching a lot of Hara Sultan's videos on this right now. Yes. <laughs> Go support Hara Sultan. I'm a patron. Yes. Oh, you are? I am. Uh, oh, okay. Good. So he, I should be a patron. Yes, you should. Um, he talks a lot about has been highlighting this uh, issue a lot recently on his channel. So I've been watching a lot of his videos about it. And what one thing he said in a video was basically like, um, it just follows this pattern of, you know, back in the day, Ahmadis, Shias, and Sunnis united against India. Mm. Then Shias and Sunnis united against Ahmadis. And now Sunnis are uniting against Shia. And so in this video, he was kind of talking about it in the context of like um, this fighting is just part of Islam and like 
it will continue. And he showed like that famous cartoon of a guy like fighting himself with a sword. Right, and right, right. The last Muslim on earth, like is still fighting himself. And so he, he was drawing it more towards, um, there will always be this kind of talk figuring. Um, but I think he also raised good points about this cycle of uniting against the minority and continuing to unite against the minority until it comes for you. Right. So, um, Luke is saying, what percentage of Pakistan is Shia? Um, I, I, I think, I mean, I just looked it up. I think it was between five and 20% based on, but so mm. five, between five and 20% seems like a really wide margin. So I don't that know. That is a huge margin. That is a huge margin. Um, so objective reality, I think we answered that question, but objective reality has a second question, which is an interesting thing. Does this affect the uh, Pakistan and Iran relationship? Do you think Iran would uh, accept Shias from Pakistan if this ex escalates? Uh, the thing is that Iran would like to maintain a good relationship with the government of Pakistan, and I think the way out of this is to say that this is the people of Pakistan, the government of Pakistan will, is not endorsing this, and I think, the go you know, as long as the government of Pakistan is not endorsing this, Iran will use it as an excuse for why to maintain a good relationship with Pakistan. Because again, Iran is becoming lonelier and lonelier in the region. They mm -hmm. cannot afford they not they're, they cannot afford right Iran's government. Sorry, not Iran. Iran's government, the Islamic Republic. The Islamic Republic cannot afford to pick more fights with more people in the region. Okay, I mean, think about it. The Islamic Republic uh, is now getting closer and closer and closer to China even though China has one of the most aggressive anti-Islam uh, policies in, in the, the world, world. Uh, anti-Muslim, sorry, not anti-Islam, not anti I wish it was anti-Islam, but it's anti-Muslim, right? Um, Dean is saying, Dean has a good comment here. Wait, where did it go? Oh, here. Are they uh, cooking big... in the background? Huh? Are they cooking yes. in the background? Okay, because we can hear everything. Okay, fine. You read this comment. I'll meet my mic. Which comment? Oh, that one? Okay. Because there's no one... It, oh, you just took it away from me. <laughs> because there's nobody a religion would rather fight than a slightly different flavor of the same religion. That's true. That's how this works. Like, you know, you go after heretics harder than you go after apostates because the heretics are the ones who are... They have the innovation, right? They are trying to potentially establish their own, you know, dominance over the truth. God forbid. <laughs> um, you're still muted. I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why, what has, what's holding you back. Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button. But nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well and share, share our videos because you know, we do get demonetized. That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that, but we don't care about that anymore, <laughs> but we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritize. What does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right and all that, you know, on the, on people's homepages. And that's how channels grow. Unfortunately we can't grow. So we need you guys to share our videos. 